What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I love a Channel 4 documentary and I saw this one, I saw the title immediately. It said, I'm 23 and I own 10 houses. So I thought, I've got to watch this and I want to react to it on the channel. So I'm not going to waste any time and get straight into it. By the way, like and subscribe. My name's Warren, I'm a property investor in the UK, across the UK. I'm looking to live free and independently from property. So I'm looking for an income of £3,000 per month. Subscribe if that's what you're on to. Let's get straight into this. What in the actual F is going on with the housing and rental at the moment? We're in a housing crisis and rent prices are through the roof. They're trying to rent out a tiny studio flat for 1200 a month. Young people are bearing the brunt of an out-of-control market. It's a nightmare getting onto the property ladder with the average deposit being over 50k. It feels like you're completely powerless to do anything. I mean, that's mad. I would say that that's mostly in the southeast. We know, if you've watched my channel over the years, London property market is a bubble it's mad then you've got the southeast and then as you go up north it is different so i guarantee you that 53k amount is the average down south down in the southeast because i buy houses up north i buy one two bed terraced houses for 150k so i know that i've, I've never paid a deposit anywhere near 53 grand up north so this is very much a south problem about it it now takes on average a decade for first time buyers to save enough for a deposit the fact that people can't save because they're paying expensive rents. The whole situation is tough. And the hardest hit are black people, with only 30% owning their own homes. When it comes to getting onto the property ladder, they don't have the benefit of the bank of mum and dad. Many of them don't have the benefit of inheritance. I genuinely think young people are pushed at this point where they don't feel like you know, getting up and going to work and saving is enough. We've seen that it's not enough. However, there's a new generation of black entrepreneurs taking back control and defying the odds and creating companies which are making an absolute fortune in the property market. So that is two million in the last two years. Over the next two years, looking to do five to 10 million. Property has changed my life. I make about 36K gross a month for my properties. My portfolio is about four point five million. Wow. Um... I'm intrigued. I mean, I don't know what I'm going to find out here. I have a feeling that this is going to be about rent to rent, but this guy's talking about owning a portfolio. So I don't know if they actually own these properties. So it sounds like some of these guys actually own these properties. Let's find out more. I was very lucky to be able to get on the property ladder. There is a huge amount of pressure on us right now to figure out how we're going to secure our housing situation but there are young people out there that are smashing it not only do they have one property they have a portfolio of properties i wonder whether this type of property flipping can be as easy as it seems is this the route to financial freedom for more young people or just another get rich quick scheme we're all so used to seeing online I believe I'm still playing very small. There'll be a time where I am doing billion pound projects. I really do believe that. I'm just scratching yeah. the surface. What's good people? Let's check out my latest one to two bedroom conversion. I mean, it is impossible to even consider getting your foot onto the property ladder as a young person let alone becoming a landlord and having a portfolio of properties and turning this into a business and making money from it. I feel like these guys on TikTok know something that we do not know. Young black people are realizing that they can be the difference, they can change the trajectory and that can be achieved through property. Like many homeowners, I bought my flat by saving up and getting a standard mortgage. But these young people are buying their properties outright by swerving mortgage lenders and raising capital elsewhere. Wow. I have raised over £500,000 for my property deals. I think social media has changed the property investment landscape massively. I mean, that is sick. So I feel like they're going to start going down the lane rather than rent to rent, which is, I've done a whole video on rent to rent, so I'm not going to talk about it here, but pros and cons to it, okay? I'll leave it there. Um, where you really want to get to as a property investor, like the mecca, is raising capital from investors who see you, know that you are legit and competent and skilled, giving you money and profit sharing with you, basically. That's where you want to get to. So I'm really interested to hear more about this. Today I'm going to be breaking down to you guys how I make it. So I have spotted this guy, Ethan, on TikTok. 
is a big businessman. What's good, people? My name's Ethan, property entrepreneur based in South London. He's doing really well for himself, so I'm going to drop him a DM because I am itching to find out more. Ethan's created a buzz on social media as a property mogul. My favourite room is an open plan living space with a two-tone kitchen, heron nice. pattern flooring, wow. and it's looking like 40 grand profit. Link in my bio for the full blueprint. Wow. He grew up on a Croydon council estate, but today owns multiple properties. How did a 25-year-old get to own seven properties and live a luxury life on social media? Ethan, how are you doing? Crazy, crazy. Nice Good to, to meet, see nice you. Very nice to see you. I'm in your neck of the woods. Yes, exactly. And I hear you're the property king. <laughs> <laughs> Buy to let property influencers are increasingly popular on TikTok and on other social media platforms, preaching the virtues of passive income. But is it all that it's cracked up to be? So that is two million. I mean, property is not passive. I'll say that much. <laughs> it's not passive. But um, yeah, if you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to scale, you know, property is is a really good avenue. And I also want to add the fact that they mention like their um, social media entrepreneurs and some people turn their nose, noses up at that. I'm a social media entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur first who happens to put it on social media. But you'll be surprised just how many people out there raise funds and capital for their property businesses through being active on social media. It's nuts, guys. In the last two years, over the next two years, looking to do five to 10 million, and just, yeah, keep on going. Property has been Ethan's ticket to the high life. From high-end restaurants and private members clubs to booking bougie getaways. Ethan's got wheels. <laughs> She's this back. is very nice. She's choosing to one. <laughs> be owning property in London and to have a car as well is, is a bit crazy at 25 years old. <laughs> is the lifestyle appealing to you? Does it make you? She's like, are you single? <laughs> Carter. Yeah, of course. I like nice things. I'm into cars. Yeah. You know, when you're going to your first nice restaurant uptown and you eat and you see how they treat you, it's like, wow, I'd love to be treated like this every day at every restaurant that I go to. Ethan's taking me to see a flat he's recently made an offer on and hopes to add to his growing property portfolio. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Okay. This one is only available to cash buyers. Wow. Being a cash buyer, cash. you can buy any kind of property because you've got no third party to answer to, like a bank. So a lot of time you'll find that a lot of mortgage lenders won't lend on a property with a short lease or lend on a property that's non-standard construction. Whereas as a cash buyer, you're able to buy whatever you want. <laughs> so this is the kitchen. It's a one-bedroom flat, um, but it's got potential. So It's I'll... nice. It's something that I personally was looking for in a property when I was buying. I really found it important to have my kitchen separate from my living room. Funny enough that you actually said Are you that. Knocking at me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you not kidding me? You see a separate kitchen, you're like, yes, I can cook in peace. I see a separate kitchen, say, yeah. yes, that's another bedroom. So ah, that okay. is how I'm going to create value okay. in this property. So yeah, I love it. This guy is really impressive. Um, Buying property and creating value, he's really talking about the BRRRR method, buyer refurbish, refinance, rent. How do you create value in properties? You refurb it, you add extra rooms and all of that stuff and then you can draw out some of that value via equity release. And the potential actually is within this property is the loft space. So I'm gonna be doing a loft conversion on nice. this property. It's going from a one bedroom to a three bedroom. Wow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the living space in that area there, but mm -hmm. then the kitchen's just gonna be running across this back wall here, essentially. See it. How much did you get this for? I got this for 140. Shut up. <laughs> and let's just clarify as well, just for the sake of people watching, we are in London. No. Yeah, so it's cheap. <laughs> what do you hope That's to sell nice. it for? I'm looking at like an end value excess of like 300,000. So where did you get the money for this one? I'm not too sure yet. So I'll be reaching out on my social media, essentially trying to raise the funds for this. So I've already committed myself to this deal. So I know I have to make it work. That feels like a daunting process to go into. Like, I've done it a few times, but there are times where, like, you do have the sleepless yeah. nights.
Ethan has a database of investors and is experienced in taking calculated risks. However, putting an offer in without having the available funds could result in losing the property and any money you've spent trying to get the deal over the line. Yeah, I mean, that's not the end of the world. You know, people lose out on property deals all the time, especially if you're an investor. Um, that's really interesting. I mean, I'm taking notes here, like having a database of investors. I might even find Ethan on Instagram or TikTok and figure out and ask him how he builds up this database. Because, you know, if you're legit and you've demonstrated through social proof on Instagram, on TikTok, whatever the social media, YouTube, whatever the social media platform is, that you do these projects and you make money, people will give you their money, okay? And you'll get to a point where you don't have enough projects at any one time to be able to let these people participate in. So you build a database and you'll be like, I'll get you in on the next one. And that seems to be where this guy is. Really impressive. So growing up here, Ethan, what made you want to become a landlord? I'd say year seven, I moved to like a school in a like, really affluent area. And I went to one of my friend's houses for the first time. And as soon as I stepped in, mm -hmm. and it was like one of the fattest houses I'd ever seen. And I said, whoa, like, what do your parents do? And he said his dad was a developer. Ah. And then ever since then, that's all. It's mad because I went to private school. I got in on a scholarship, so I didn't pay full fees. But that's exactly my experience. I grew up on a council estate in, in London. And the amount of people, middle class people at school whose houses I went to, and you're like, this is a castle. And there was actually one guy whose dad was a um, developer, property developer, and he had probably one of the nicest houses I've ever seen in Nicebridge. Even at the back of my mind, like, yes, if I want to live in a house like this, property is where I need to get into. Yeah. Ethan's been posting on Instagram and YouTube for the past three years, highlighting his expertise in the property market and building his own brand. When I speak to um, older developers and landlords and I say, yeah, I've raised capital via social media, they're like, what in the world is going, what in the world is going on? And that is through like building a personal brand and just yeah. building social credibility yeah. and just showing to other people that you are an investable person. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to raise like hundreds of thousands of pounds wow. through social media. Ethan has built up several trusted investors that he knows personally. He also carries out formal background checks to avoid any scams or money laundering. Both investors and developers are at risk and should always seek advice from a financial conduct authority property. It's a lengthy process before he sees a penny of profit. He must wait for the refurb to be completed, then needs to find a buyer who's happy to purchase it at its new price. It's a case for portfolio. But Ethan is far from alone. Young mum Esther is at an earlier stage of her property journey and is working towards building a pool of investors who are prepared to invest their money into her venture. She already has one buy to let property, but how do you go about growing a portfolio from the ground up? So Esther, what sort of property are you into? Um, the smelly of the better. The smelly ones. <laughs> you mean the smelly ones? The doer offers. The doer offers. Oh, so you are really into, like, renovation. And are you flipping these properties or are you renting them out? My preferred strategy is to keep them. Okay. So... What um, is your income? The strategy is called BRR. Buy, refurbish, rent, refinance. What is BRR and how does it work? So typically when a lot of developers buy a property, they'll buy it, refurb it, and they'll sell it, so it ends there. However, with this particular strategy, the investor is hoping to retain the property. The bank will typically give you a loan that is 75% of what your asset is worth. And that's why a lot of people describe it as recycling your cash, because you refinance your money back out and then go and do it all over again. And it's quite a good strategy for people that are looking to build a portfolio. Yeah, I mean, I've done this once in um, Manchester and I hope to do it again and again and again, because as you said, you recycle your cash and uh, long term, you're, you're retaining properties, but also getting chunks of money back out to reinvest and go again and go again and go again. Esther, what got you into property? Where did your interest come from? So I actually started while I was on maternity leave. Okay. Wow. I'm a nurse, my background. As you know, there's like always news on like wow. nurses are overworked, underpaid, don't have much time. Whereas whilst I'm, I was on maternity leave, I, like, I had time to kind of think like, okay, if outside being a nurse, what would I actually do? Amazing. I guess getting into property, it it's always positioned as being, you know, a time consuming thing. How did you manage to do this on maternity leave? I think my attitude is, it is difficult, yes. It wasn't easy. I had to do long drives to the properties with my two-year-old and my newborn. Wow. Um, 
um, there were times where I, you know, the baby's crying, I've had to stop and breastfeed and continue. Like, that's not easy, but it had to be done. Respect, I have to give respect um, to the chat before, but also her. She's in an even trickier position. Having a oh, young child and a baby and doing property, I mean, I don't know if I could do that personally. I like to think I could, but I guess I'll never know. Um, but to pick your pick yourself up by pick yourself up by the bootstraps, as they say, and you know make a go of it and start a property portfolio. Nothing but respect. She uses Instagram to attract initial investors to her rental properties. They provide the capital for her to make the initial purchase and refurbishments. She looks to attract multiple investors. Some putting in as little as five grand, all the way up to the full value of the property. What is in it for the investor? Walk me through the process that you will explain to them. Part. You have your funds sitting in a bank account doing absolutely nothing. If it stayed there for a year, it would lose value to inflation. Whereas if you invested it, you get your money back plus the agreed percentage of returns. What type of investors are you finding then? Is it just like your, your everyday person? Yeah, I mean, like, an investor is literally anyone. Anyone who's got money in the bank and they would like it to work harder for them. Uh -huh. You must see the world so differently. Like, the world must just be open to business yeah. for you. Even just looking up and down the street, like, yeah, like everyone's a potential investor, right? Everyone's a potential business. Hence my top. What? Stop. <laughs> She's a walking billboard. <laughs> What's it say? I buy properties and work with investors. Together, we can beat the bank. You, you can see. see. BRRR is a popular strategy, but certainly isn't a guaranteed success. Since you're working with borrowed capital, the cost of repaying the loan is high until you can refurb the property, find a tenant and rent it at a profit, then you must repay your investors. And with all profits, there are also tax implications to consider too. A lengthy and unpredictable process to be approached with caution. Yeah, uh, and that especially, you know, having gone through it personally myself, it, it absolutely is not without its risks, but that's why you take calculated a calculated risk, choosing the right property, choosing the right project, because the biggest risk in it is basically the refurb part. You know, are the builders going to do what they say they're going to do when they're going to do it? Is it going to be to a good standard? Are there going to be any unexpected or unforeseen costs? All of that stuff you need to factor in and be careful about and judge the risk accordingly. It's crazy to think that these investors are handing over their money on social media. I'm curious to know why they are open to taking that risk and why this is catching on as a trend. So I'm going to end it there. I mean, that is this is a really interesting uh, video for me personally, because that's where I want to get to as an investor, as an investor and an entrepreneur. And it fills me with joy to see people that look like me, young people saying, look, London is hard. The UK is hard right now. The cost of living, inflation, it is hard to just survive, okay, in this country right now. So people taking situation into their own hands and being, look, I'm going to pursue this and make a go of it nothing but respect. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Does it make you want to do the same sort of thing as well? Make a business of it. Thanks as always for following. Like and subscribe. Send this video and this channel to someone that you think might appreciate it because that's how this channel goes. That's all I ask of you and I'll see you guys on the next one.